I'm Dexter Ogier at Finders Fair, and we are so very excited to be hosting Inez Alvidrez at our next class show. Class is Contemporary Local Artist Show Series, and we are hosting Inez. It'll be the first Thursday in April. That'll be April the 2nd, and that night will be uh, the, her opening exhibit from 5 to 9, and her works will be on display for a month until uh, May the 2nd. So uh, Inez has graciously uh, joined us this morning to talk about some of her art, and uh, welcome, Inez. Well, thank you for having me. Uh, my pleasure. Well, uh, I know that from seeing some of your past works that sometimes you're, that all your work isn't the same genre. You, you have different different things. And we're going to look at another completely different uh, approach to, to your work that you do. Um, and then this past week, I saw some of your work at the, the Heart Fundraiser at Daryl Trophy's Gallery, which was amazing. Some of the pieces you had were absolutely amazing in there. And and in those, all of your pieces were associated with music. Yes. Isn't that so? Somebody told me that. Huh? Yes. Yes. The idea of doing a hard show seemed um, uh, good for a good cause, mm -hmm. helping the heart association. But as an artist, to make a heart and say, here's my heart, I want to have a story behind it. I uh, was inspired by uh, Janet Joplin's taking another little piece of my heart. Oh. And that oh, yeah. was absolutely the reason I was in the show. Because the sketch and the, the heart was already on my on my sketches for the show in April. Mm -hmm. Later on I found out about the show and I said, Well I already have a heart going on. How about um, I find this person and, and, and show him what I have in mind because I'm not in the list of the artists but I wanna be. Uh, show him, he says yes. And the heart is the reason I was there. After Janet Joplin's, I saw a piece that is really similar to this. And while I was painting it, with no intention, absolutely none, I was watching Bob Marley's documentary over mm -hmm. and over. But the piece was reggae, and the lines were, were dancing around the heart, and the colors were not set yet. I knew the heart was gonna be red. But then at the end of the documentary, I said, this is Bob Marley, and I didn't realize <laughs> until the end. So I said, okay, we're gonna do Jamaica, we're gonna do red, yellow, green, and it really spoke when I was done with it. And I said, yeah, this is this love. And when I played the song next to the piece, it made sense, uh, and it was the heart, and it was the music dancing around it. Well, I noticed that uh, at the show, just about everything you had in the show sold, didn't it? Yes. Yeah, it was very exciting, and, and it really it was a nice, nice to see all those things because there were a lot of different things. Now, when you first came to this country what, in 2000, yes, 2000. Yeah, and then you finished your schooling here, and you got a degree, didn't you, from Lamar? Uh, well, it's the institute. I'm a computer drafter. That's what computer I want. Computer drafter. That would come in handy in, in drawing and, and, and laying out your canvases and so forth. What is your, I mean, I can feel that some of your inspiration is from the music, yes. but your colors are so unique and, and vibrant, and the way that you put the colors together. Is there a background for that? It always, um, when I find out how you can create colors from only the primary, I went crazy. I'm like, well, I will challenge myself. How many blues can you make? How many reds can you make? So when I'm creating a piece like this, I start with very basics, and then it the escalate because I'm trying to find tones that will be very similar, but they are completely different mix. Mm -hmm. So this is the beauty, and I think a lot of people will um, really enjoy it without realizing the fact that it's so many pinks and so many blues. And the eye is trying to capture all of those colors at once. So, yes. Color is, uh, and I'm from Mexico. Uh, food, um, music, I think it does. Um, it's a way to to put in a canvas. And this itself is called Taromara, which are the Indians from where I'm from. From Chihuahua City. Yes, um, 
these Indians are colorful, very strong, and I can never draw a taromara and say, well, this is a taromara, it's a person. I have to do it in a way that only I can see it, I think. Well, when I see this, I see some of those fabrics that they use, their, their dresses and their, their capes and things. And it's, it's like this, it's so vibrant. That's interesting. Good. Well, Inez, you're self-taught. You weren't trained in art. You, you were trained in computer drafting. Mm -hmm. How did that kind of happen? How did you kind of transist from that? Why did you start creating art? Well, uh, I know a lot of people or artists might have the same uh, story that they grew up loving art. Um, when you're little, you don't know what art is. And when I was in kindergarten, I was, um, well, that's what you do. You color, you cut, you make, you create. That's, that's opening your, your brain to, to do other things. But I was always uh, the little kid that drew the, the bed or colored the bed. And my mom said that she will go to this meeting that will have once a week so you can watch your kid paint or draw. Mm -hmm. And she said, I always have this patience doing all this work. Uh, and she actually also enjoyed the other ones going crazy. But she said, I was very um, concentrated, very into the pieces in the kindergarten with, where a kid doesn't know what art is. Uh, then school goes, and I always love art. Always remember in school, um, fifth, seventh grade, they give me to shoe. You have to shoot either guitar lessons or painting. Uh, in school, it was the class that they would offer. And I wanted to play music. I'm like, oh, I want to do music. But art, even though <laughs> it pulled me, it, it did. I wanted music, but art was stronger than music. And honestly, never imagined show these and talk to someone about what I do, painting, because I did it for years. And I experimented with shapes, I experimented with colors, uh, and I have to thank every single artist in Bowman, Texas that showed me what I do. And I said, well, I do stuff too, but I didn't know it was good enough to show. Sure. It was good enough for me, and I enjoyed it. But um, the fact that they were so enthusiastic about showing and creating drove me to, well, I know how to do a few things. And from that point, I started experimenting different techniques. Things I've never done, but I said, well, how about I do one little, everything starts small with me. I did small, and then I just escalated. Um, hopefully for April, you see something like this four times a day. All right. Uh, but it's because it, it, it's, it's me creating something that I'm, I wanna fall in love with. I wanna be very proud. And, and from there, just let it be and, and just evolve and, and I call it my snowball. You know, I want mm -hmm. to go very little and just... Well, most, most artists that I've read about, they would do sketches and they were always small. And then they would come back and paint from their sketch, their, their finished painting. So it's, it's, but, how, but how about the material? I mean, this is acrylic? Yes, it's acrylic uh, on canvas. And um, you work with other materials as well. Yes, I love to uh, uh, just color. So I more think I've got something here. It's got chalk in it. Only the epoxy. Well, that that is actually uh, the piece that we're going to see next. Is a mandala or made with oil pastels. The leftovers are nailed and create this texture um, in the pieces. Someone asked me for art director a show, and the reporter says, or asked me, what is your technique? Because there's so much going on. What is your technique? And at that point, I had some, I was very comfortable at the end of the show. You know, it's been great, everyone loves it. And I told the reporter, well, my technique is color. Give me color and I do something. And I know it's not correct, uh, but color, that's what dies. I can use absolutely anything. Well, I think Matisse would argue with you. I think he thought color was everything. So <laughs> you're in a good school. <laughs> um, so 
as I mentioned a minute ago, I have one of your paintings that has an epoxy. Do you still do that, or do you transist from one form of... of no, I think I have. Uh, it's going to be a great opportunity on April for people to see almost three different uh, uh, ways of me producing. This I love, because this was... Everyone that sees this horse says, well, this is new. This is something new for you, I guess. And I say, no, this is my beginning. This is what I always done. Uh, and I hide it for a while because it was never, I never expected the people to be drawn to it. It was so intimate, it was so personal. But I feel that uh, techniques that were more uh, interesting for some people, so I kept showing that, uh, the one that you have or you, you acquire, uh, it was from uh, not letting materials go to waste. I say, I can add it all these beautiful oil pastels after making big pieces. Uh, and I experimented, different technique. I don't know if it might be a technique or somebody does it already. But for me, it was something I was playing with. Made a piece, put it on a show, and then you fell in love with it. I did. And, and I was just, I want to keep making those. And I don't make any more, uh, many of those, because those come after making big pieces. So what is left behind, I mailed and they come out of the piece. Very interesting. That's good. Yeah. I noticed that you sign your pieces. Always. Have you always, always signed them? Always. Good. Even when I didn't know I was going to do this. <laughs> always put my name. In the signature, um, I fell in love with it. I, my name is still with this, but my painting will have a Z. Z? Yes. And and this is the artist. I think that that um, the Z makes it um, the signature itself. I think is a is a piece. It, the signature is almost like your your mark. Yes, it's a very. And yes. I wish I remember how everything started with that signature. I always like to create logos, mm -hmm. and I did for school for different things, mixing the letters and creating. It, it is a technique people, you know, uh, play with signatures. In mine, I wish I can remember how <laughs> it started. <laughs>
and they, they made these beautiful um, patterns that always have a um, circle mm -hmm. uh, ending, I think square, but they always have a base of circles. Uh, meditation, that's, that's one of the main uh, reasons they they are created for, meditate. And is that the same thing is true in, in your culture? Absolutely. Well, uh, different religion system. Um, wasn't really introduced to this until I was uh, here. Oh. I go to a museum in San Antonio and I see a mandala for the very first time. The mandalas are not kept for anyone to admire. When they're done, they're destroyed. They just, and that's a way to tell God we're not attached to material material things. We can let them go. It takes so much work and they look so beautiful. The fact that they're willing to do this and they do that to prove that is beautiful. Um, when I came back from that trip from San Antonio uh, and seeing the mandala, I knew I was going to make mandalas at one point. I didn't know how. And then I came with this, this um, idea of, of creating my way of making mandalas. And I make quills as well. I don't know how to sew, but I make quills with the same uh, format. And I like to say that I, I create uh, something in my way, um, and in this case it's the edging and different. Well, so what's the title of this one? This is mandala. This is the very first, primera mandala, which means the first mandala. This is the very first mandala. I don't do it so far. Um, and they all um, have a good good house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, so do you see your art in the process of evolving? I mean, are, are you already starting to think about new ways to express yourself and to, to share what what's inside you with other people? Are you thinking of new ways, different ways, or maybe adapting ways you already have? Or? How does that work in, in an artist's mind? In, in my case, I think every show is challenging me. It, it's bringing a new challenge. Um, the place I'm going to be showing, the people that is going to be attending, is not changing my, my ways of creation, but it's inspiring me to just do things. Uh, a project coming up that it will be on big windows where you can see the water outside is just making me think, well, I want to create something that is me but how about we make it uh, transparent? How about people can see it from inside and out? And, and, and so it just creates, the venue absolutely makes me think of new ways or more ideas. But the art itself, it will be true to what it is. Color, um, meditation, and, and I'm inviting everyone to go to my shows to spend more than five seconds or so. I want them to go and take a little uh, journey following one or two lines and see what happens. Well, so how do you know when a piece is finished? Um, I have to stop myself at one point. I said, uh, and you train. Uh, at the beginning, you don't know what you're doing, you don't know where you're going, so you don't know when it's done. Uh, now I do. I. Uh, create and when I look at it and say I'm satisfied, it's done. It doesn't mean it's, it might be done for other people, but it's done for me. For and sometimes I have to start a piece halfway, let it sit for a minute or, or do another piece, come back to it, and then I know that I'm going to uh, finish that idea. Sometimes you don't, you don't have the idea, um, start and finish. No, you have to let them rest and then you come back to them and finish that. Yeah, I can understand. Well, we are so thankful that you came today and shared this with us. I, I, I know everybody's going to be excited to come for the first Thursday. And again, that is the, the first Thursday in April. It's April the 2nd, from 5 to 9, here at the Milton Building. And Inez will be here, and she'll talk to you about her art, and get to meet her, and see the kind of things that excites her and why she does what she does. Thank you, Inez, for being here. Thank you very much. I, I'm really excited. I can now wait for uh, all of you to come and see the show. I'll be waiting at the door with, <laughs> with uh, great things for you to see and enjoy. And it's a matter of days. We're, we're very close to you.